Hello and welcome to In Depth. I'm Tina Jha. The United Nations Development Program released its late, uh, latest Human Development Report on Monday. India further improved its rank to 129 among 189 countries. With the HDI value of 0 0.647, India has made significant improvements in the basic dimensions of human development, that is, a long and healthy life, access to knowledge and a decent standard of living. Also, as per the report, the overall trend globally is towards continued human development improvements as many countries have moved up through the human development categories. But at the same time, the report this year has analyzed the rising inequality worldwide. It says just as the gap in basic living standards is narrowing for millions of people around the world, the necessities to thrive have also evolved. Despite global progress in tackling poverty, hunger and disease, a new generation of inequalities is opening up around education, around technology and also around climate change. And if left unchecked, this could trigger a new great divergence in society of the kind not seen since the Industrial Revolution. In Depth today analyzes the Human Development Report 2019 in greater detail. We look at the improvements made by India over the years and also the debate over these rankings. Human Development Index is a measurement system used by the United Nations to evaluate the level of individual human development in each and every country around the world. It uses components such as average annual income and educational expectations to rank and also compare countries. Every year, the UNDP ranks countries based on the HDI report released in their annual report. So in our first report today, let's understand how the United Nations measures the human development index of these countries. The United Nations releases the Human Development Index every year. HDI is a statistic developed by the United Nations to measure a country's level of social and economic development. This index is a tool used to follow changes in development levels over time and to compare these levels for different countries. The HDI is like a country's report card. In a single number, it tells policymakers and citizens how well their country is doing. The index was first created by Pakistani economist Mehboobul Haq in 1990. Calculation of the index combines four major indicators, mean years of schooling, expected years of schooling, life expectancy at birth and gross national income per capita. The computed HDI of a country is an average of these four indicators. The health aspect of the HDI is measured by the life expectancy as calculated at the time of birth in each country. Education is measured on two levels, the mean years of schooling for residents of a country and the expected years of schooling that a child has at the average age for starting school. The standard of living is measured by gross national income per capita based on purchasing power parity. Before HDI, a country's level of development was measured solely by its economic growth. Uh, three components, one is, as you said, um, income, one is um, uh, the, the means of uh, schooling, school, schooling years, and then the third is the life expectancy. So uh, we combine and come up with the index. Um, 129, again, it's not only about ranking, but uh, in that also, uh, in this year's report, we're talking about beyond averages. And average often disguise the details uh, and inequalities. So uh, this is the, 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 the theme of today's, uh, this year's report. HDI is ranked on a scale from 0 to 1.0, with 1.0 being the highest human development. It is broken down into four tiers, very high human development, high human development, medium human and low human development. Most developed countries have an HDI score of 0 0.8 or above. This implies that the countries have stable governments, widespread education and healthcare, high life expectancies and growing powerful economies. 
The least developed countries have HDI scores in the low human development tiers with HDI scores below 0.55. Least developed countries often face unstable governments, widespread poverty, lack of access to healthcare and poor education. Additionally, these countries have low income and low life expectancies coupled with high birth rates. Beyond today, I think that's also very important. While um, when, when the Human Development Report was uh, first launched that years ago, we are only looking at basic needs of people, which are uh, income and health and education. But now, after 30 years in, in, in the 21st century, uh, the challenges such as climate change, challenges such as technology, uh, AI, should be also uh, taken into consideration when we uh, sub, uh, we we um, devise policies so uh, we are not we are encouraging policymakers and also journalists and then, uh, academics to to really look into uh, to today's challenge and emerging challenges many experts believe hdi is one of the best tools to track the level of development of a country as it combines all major social and economic indicators responsible for economic development by taking non-economic dimensions of human well-being into account, the HDI revolutionized the idea of what was meant by countries becoming more developed. But many economists and social advocates have criticized the index for not representing a broad enough measure of quality of life and for providing little additional useful information beyond simpler measures of the economic standard of living. It also faces criticism over the possibility of high level of data error in each one of its indicators. This year, Norway has emerged at the top of the rankings while Niger finished last. Out of 189 countries that have been ranked, India is placed at 129, which is one spot better than last year. With inputs from Anu Devan, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let's now take a look at the various human development indices in the Human Development Report 2019, the various categories in which the countries are classified into, and in which group does India find its place. India improved its position to 129 among 189 countries in the latest Human Development Index released by the United Nations Development Programme. The Human Development Index value of 0.647 in 2018 puts India in the medium human development category, according to the Human Development Report. In the year 2017, India occupied the 130th position with a HDI value of 0.643. Between 1990 and 2018, India's HDI value increased from 0.431 to 0.647 an increase of nearly 50% and an indicator of the country's remarkable achievement in lifting millions of people out of poverty. The average annual HDI growth between 1990 to 2018 was recorded at 1.46%. I think it's good that uh, India is making a modest but steady progress. Uh, my suggestion also is not only look, looking at just the ranking, but the, the progress itself. When you look at India's progress for the past 30 years since the inception of the Human Development Report, India has made tremendous progress. Uh, people living, for example, 11 years longer than 30 years ago, children are in school three, uh, three and a half years longer. And, and as for the income, it is almost uh, more than tripled. So there are a lot of success stories behind. So. Uh, uh, we don't recommend that only looking at the ranking. The Human Development Index is a summary measure to assess long-term progress in three basic dimensions of human development. A long and healthy life, access to knowledge and a decent standard of living. Based on these parameters, it classifies countries into various human development groups such as very high human development, high human development, medium human development and low human development. Norway, Switzerland, Ireland, Germany and Hong Kong are among the 62 countries with very high human development. Serbia, Trinidad and Tobago, Iran, Mauritius and Panama are among the top few in the high human development category. India is part of the medium human development group which has countries like Marshall Islands, Vietnam, Palestine, 
Iraq and Morocco. While neighboring countries like Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal and Pakistan are also part of this group. The Low Human Development Group comprises of countries like Syria, Papua New Guinea, Comoros, Rwanda and Nigeria. Niger, the Central African Republic, Chad, South Sudan and Burundi have the lowest scores in the HDI's measurement of national achievements in health, education and income. Among the regions worldwide, the HDI value of Arab states in 2018 was 0 0.703. In East Asia and the Pacific, it was 0 0.741. In Europe and Central Asia, it was 0 0.779. While in Latin America and the Caribbean, it was 0 0.759. In the South Asian region, it was 0.642, while in the Sub-Saharan African region, it was 0.541. So beyond income is something that we already started when the Human Development Report was launched 30 years ago. We often, I mean, we often look at countries' progress, development, just through uh, financial economic indicators, including income. But it's not, uh, that's not the, the whole picture. It has to also take into account of uh, gender equality, has to also take, about, uh, take into account the, the health-related matters, education. So um, we would like to, through this report, we would like to emphasize the importance of going beyond income. And then coming to the average part. Again, when you um, um, aggregate the, the data, and the inequalities are, are missed, are lost in there. So we are encouraging uh, policymakers to, uh, to look into the, the inequalities which are be, uh, behind the averages. Which communities, which group, which schedule caste, which region, which uh, states are uh, behind, behind the average. As per the report, the overall trend globally is towards continued human development improvements with many countries moving up through the human development categories. Out of the 189 countries for which the HDI is calculated, 62 countries are in the very high human development group and only 36 countries fall in the low HDI group. However, it does state that just as the gap in basic living standards is narrowing for millions of people, inequalities surrounding education, around technology and climate change have sparked demonstrations across the globe. If left unchecked, this could trigger a new great divergence in society of the kind not seen since the Industrial Revolution, according to the report. The report says in 2018, 20% of human development progress was lost due to the unequal distribution of education, health and living standards. About 26.8% of India's HDI value was lost on account of inequalities. And therefore, the report recommends revamped policies in the areas of education, productivity and public spending, calling for opportunities to be seized quickly and shared broadly. With input from Anu Divan, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabhati. So, the 2019 UNDP Human Development Report ranks India at 129 out of 189 countries that have been assessed. That's one ranking better than what it was in the year 2017. The country's HDI value has also increased by 50% from 0 0.431 to 0.647. Let's now take a look at India's ranking in each human development parameter and how the improvements have come about over the years. Between 1990, when the Human Development Index was first introduced, till 2018, India has made significant improvements. The Human Development Report 2019 finds that life expectancy at birth is up by 11.6 years, expected years of schooling is up by 4.7 years, per capita incomes also rose by over 250%, while India ranks 122 out of 162 countries in gender development. This is an excellent news. Absolute poverty has declined dramatically in large part due to the progress made by India and China. India lifted 271 million people out of multidimensional poverty between 2005 to 2015. This is something to celebrate. And in, in the uh, 30 years between 1990 and 2018, India's Human Development Index values has uh, increased by 50%, not a very good news, 
per capita income has uh, more than tripled, uh, precisely 263 percent. Estimates based on the sample registration system of the Office of the Registrar General and Census Commissioner show that the average life expectancy at birth has increased from 60.7 years during 1992 to 96 to 68.7 years during the period 2012 to 2016. In 2018, it had reached 69.4. This increase in life expectancy in our country is the result of a rapid decline in infant and maternal mortality and increased immunization against infectious diseases in childhood and early adulthood. Access to better housing, sanitation, education, a trend towards smaller families, growing incomes and other public health measures such as preventive and promotive health care have also contributed in this epidemiological transition. Neonatal mortality rate in the country also came down to 24 per 1,000 live births in 2016 and the infant mortality rate came down to 33 per 1,000 live births in 2017. Soon after coming to power in 2014, the Modi government launched the India Newborn Action Plan that aims to attain the goals of single-digit neonatal mortality rate and single-digit stillbirth rate by 2030. Our life expectancy has increased by 11.6 years. Our mean years of schooling has increased by 3.5 years. Our expected years of schooling increased by 4.7 years. And GNI has increased by 262%. In terms of education too, India has made significant improvements. The expected years of schooling at birth in India is now 12.3, while the mean years of schooling is 6.5. Over the past few years, the government has made investments in the education sector. 94,853.64 crore rupees has been allocated to the HRD ministry for the current financial year of 2019-2020. The public expenditure on education in India has hovered around 4.38% of the GDP, while currently around 10% of the total government spending goes towards education. The government has also launched an integrated scheme for school education, Samagra Shiksha, which focuses on improvement in school infrastructure and quality of education by providing support for various interventions like upgradation of schools and strengthening of infrastructure of existing schools. The government's proposed new national education policy aims to reform the education system across all levels and subsectors of school and higher education, including adult education, vocational education, and professional education. The midday meal scheme has also helped improve attendance in schools, especially in rural areas. The government's efforts towards improving the economy have also been reflected in India's rankings. The country's gross national income per capita now stands at $6,829. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. The idea behind the Human Development Index is to provide a st uh, statistical measure of the country's overall social and economic achievements. Now, these achievements are based on the health of the people, their level of education attainment, and also their standard of living. But questions abound as to whether the index is comprehensive. The Human Development Index is designed on the premise that expanding human choices should be the ultimate criteria to assess development results. Seen in this light, economic growth is a means to that process, but not an end in itself. The HDI then becomes a measure to question national policy choices. It helps us to understand why two countries with the same level of gross national income per capita have different human development outcomes. For instance, Malaysia has a per capita GNI that is higher than Chile. But in Malaysia, the life expectancy at birth is four years shorter. Similarly, the expected years of schooling is also three years less than Chile. These are factors that result in Chile having a higher HDI value than Malaysia. While the focus on such details do make Human Development Index a valuable measure of a country's development, it is also criticized on a number of grounds. Experts point out that it does not take into account technological development or even contributions to human civilization. It indicates a number of things actually, but more so it's trying to talk about inequality. We need to look at inequalities in human development and not just inequalities in consumption or inequalities in income. That's one. Second, they're trying to say that we have moved beyond a particular level. 
So what the report basically says that there's a convergence when it comes to basic capabilities. We have escaped the prison of extreme deprivations. There is some convergence which is happening over there. But there is a divergence which might happen if we don't course correct right now. And that divergence will happen in enhanced capabilities. Now think in terms of the fourth industrial revolution. Think in terms of artificial intelligence, robotics, automation. There might be a divergence over here and if you don't fix it now, it will get entrenched in society. That's another thing the report talks about. The inequalities when they do happen, they are intergenerational. So they have a tendency to get transferred from generation to generation. So if there's more inequality, income inequality, then intergenerational mobility is also reduced. That's something the report says. And the report also highlights things like, apart from technology which I mentioned, how climate change might actually bring about a lot of inequalities. So climate change with extreme heat events, with fluctuation precipitation, you might affect people's livelihoods. Some economists have questioned the prospect of data error in health, education and income statistics that are used to construct HDI. Data error can be due to improper updation of data, revisions of the formula to calculate statistics as well as deciding the threshold to classify a country's development status. For instance, differences can arise over what is the subsistence level of income in a country. Whatever officials could always misreport the real situation to misguide policy makers, investors, charity donors or even the general public. Experts also agree that HDI is a simplification of human development. It does not specifically reflect quality of life factors like human empowerment or overall feeling of security. It has to be therefore seen along with additional composite indices to evaluate other life aspects including inequality issues like gender disparity or racial inequality. It's about in inequalities which are um, hidden, which are disguised by the, the averages. That is very important to, to look at or define uh, who are the most vulnerable groups in the communities and really uh, provide tailored support so that they would not be left behind. Evaluation of any country's HDI is best calculated by taking into account any country's rate of economic growth, the expansion of employment opportunities and the success of initiatives to improve overall quality of life. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV And that's it from us in this edition of In-Depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow with a focus on some other subject. In case you missed the television broadcast of our program, you can also watch it online on YouTube and Twitter. And you can also send in your feedback and suggestions about our program. Thank you for your time.